Hey, morning, Tim. Hey, Robbie. Hey, Joey. A luck. It's the old group. <laughs> Hello, Tim. Hey, guys. We'll get started in about one more minute, and then we'll just move on here. For a moment, I felt like it's an aura and meeting. Yeah, that's what I said. It's, <laughs> it's same clowns, different circus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, I, I, I could say that because I'm one of the clowns. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Ravi, are you audible? Just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, just, okay, just, sure. just yeah. being sure. Sure. All right, let's 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 just get started real quick here. Uh, so this is the November 1st uh, ORAN integration meeting. Um, so we have some uh, agenda items uh, for today. One, we're going to go through the previous minutes uh, real quick and and. and note if there's anything that changed on that or and try to get approval from the group. Uh, what we'll also do is uh, we're going to continue that discussion on the ORAN architecture. What we said last meeting was uh, we needed to come to some uh, consensus on this. Uh, so that's a, that's a good thing because I think we're converging quite well on the, uh, on the discussion. And I would encourage the group to use that ORAN discussion channel on the Slack as well as these um, you know, the, the, the drive information as you've been doing, because I think it, um, we don't have a lot of meetings and we only do one meeting. Um, we probably have three meeting sessions before we have to get back to the network architecture team with our identification of our use cases and everything else. So using that channel does help. Um, speaking of that, there are some release three dates that we talked about uh, that we have to come to some consensus with today of whether what, what is the date we're going to go back to the network architecture team with this type of information, as well as what, at what date are we going to say to the network automation team that will have the information that they need for whatever enablers that they want to develop for release three. So we, we do need to spend some time today on that and get an agreement from the group on it. I put in the example dates, uh, one that I got from WIM and the other is just backing up trying to meet one's date, you know, the January 31st. Um, and then, uh, I, I want to show uh, what the network architecture is asking for us uh, to put into their agenda. So it'll be five minutes just to figure out, you know, giving them the status of what we're trying to do. Um, and then there was some stuff that came out of, out of the week that um, people want to um, uh, request uh, the Seishu and Alexis, who's doing some of the uh, SMO, IMS and DMS interactions with uh, OSC. Uh, and so, and, and, and some studies that they're doing in ORAN, what they've done, there was a request to, to, to have that information fed back as well as Sagar uh, requested some information to be fed back, but he, he's not available today. So we're going to schedule that for a later date, probably November 8th when he has time. So that's what we have today. And, and, and I don't think we're going to get to it, but we're eventually have to get to begin discussions once we have the architecture set. Uh, begin some discussions on some of the objectives that we want to do and the user stories behind release three. Does anyone else have any other uh, agenda items for today? Okay, and I try to keep these rolling agenda items, guys. So uh, as, as they go through and we're able to schedule them, I'll, I'll try to keep them in there. Okay, so again, this is the this is the uh, minutes from the from the previous meeting. Um, I just ask at this point, uh, I don't try to go through them all, but I would just ask, does anyone have any comments on it that they that they feel that they have needed change uh, that wasn't reflected correctly? Um, if not, I'd ask for approval. I'll just quickly scroll through them. Okay, so does anyone object to approval of the minutes and from that? All right, hearing none, I'll just mark those approved. 
And then we come up to today, right? And so again, where we left this was we we were talked about the integration. Hey, um, hey Tim, we have one yeah. raised hand. Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't uh, see it. I mean, no I, objection. I, yeah. Go no ahead. objection to any of this meeting minutes, but I like it. Okay. I like the fact that you're asking people for uh, you know review and approval. This is a cool practice. Thank you. All right, sure, no worries. All right, so uh, it just keeps me honest. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. All right. And so uh and so what we what we have been discussing and what we said what we have to do before we get into the objectives and the user stories is that we have to come to consensus with this integration architecture. So uh hidden somewhere in here is the uh integration architecture that we've been discussing. We started it with uh Robbie provided a, a an integration architecture that he had. And uh, silly me, I was just trying to get some room here to show this in the integration architecture uh, that, that what it would look like, but then we started having discussions here. So we're gonna complete these discussions. So Ravi, I think where we're at right now is what I suggested was we started with this, uh, this diagram where we have the Nethio orchestration function uh, as well as the FOCOM uh, service producers and the NFO service producers. And we were trying to figure out how all that look uh, with respect to the SMO services and the RAN domain management, right? Um, and you suggested looking at that, and I think you had some concerns why you did this. Uh, I'm sorry. So I then came back and looked at, uh, said, okay, if you look at functions, the, the way that they're defining functions in the decoupled uh, SMO, we could actually have a function called, and they have identified this function, by the way, in, in the decoupled CR, uh, called the ORMA. It's the, I forget what it all stands for, the Orchestration RAN Management, or Management Orchestration. Anyway, there's an acronym I think I put in here. Uh, yeah, it's called the O-Cloud, O -Cloud Resource Management and Orchestration Function, right? And so what they did was they were combining these two service producers of the NFO and the FOCOM into a single function. Because if you look at the service-based architecture, what ORAN is doing is that they're defining services. They're defining services that can be attributed to network function orchestration, uh, services that can be attributed to uh, FOCOM, which is the Federation Orchestra, I don't know, some, it's got an acronym. Um, and so what they said was that they need to have any services themselves has to have a, a thing, a real thing that is the producer and consumer of the services, now, particularly the producer of the services, what we're talking about. And they call those functions, right? So that's why they call them, they don't have ERs, they don't have an orchestrator, they have a function uh, that is the real thing that backs them up. And that's why I, I kind of keep trying to change this to Nephio orchestration, it's the Nephio orchestrator, right? Um, and so there's functions that are produces these services. And what I did is I said, oh, well, there's actually a function that uh, the SMO has already defined or as a possible solution that'll, that'll ease our burden. And we could actually combine the, the functions, the sub-functions of the Nephio orchestration function, as well as the NFO uh, service producer function and, and the FOCOM service producer function, along with any other behaviors that they have. And we can combine that into the O of the, the, this ORMO function, and it, and it allows for the exposure, uh, the production of the, uh, uh, of the FOCOM and NFO services, and it also allows for the exposure of the O2 IMS and DMS function, okay? So that was the reason behind that. Um, and, and so I just wanna make sure everyone is clear if there are any questions on the difference between a service and a function, which is a service producer. And what Nephio, or not Nephio, ORAN is going to specify are the services. Okay. Uh, Alexis, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Tim. Uh, my question is the following, because I'm not familiar with these function or these services as part of the SMO decomposition. Is ORMO a black box in the eyes of the SMO? Or does it know that in ORMO there is a FO FOCOM and a NFO component? The reason so, I'm asking it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, so so any function, right, is responsible for announcing what services it implements, 
Okay. So in this case, the OMO would say, hey, uh, I implement the FOCOM services and the NFO services. Right. And then the rest of the service guy says, oh, that's a service producer. I can consume services from them. So you could have the SO can consume services then from OMO. Right. So it's responsible. Any function is responsible for uh, uh, doing a couple basic things. Announcing their services and also interacting with what they call the data management exposure, exposing the, the repositories of that stuff. I didn't think why I put this as Ormo was I didn't think the Nepio orchestration, those enablers that we're building down there, we would want to make a full write function in itself that would have to expose services and um, uh, you know have, uh, interact with the DME. So I kept it under what they called it Ormo. Did that answer your question, Alexis? Yes, it does. And uh, thank you. And, and so my follow-up comments, and I think this is where um, we were having a lot of debate, is <clears throat> in my view, the infrastructure cluster controllers are a component of FOCOM, and the deployment controllers are a component of NFO. So. I'm absolutely fine if we have that Ormo box or, or function that talks Southbound O2 to the cloud, because I think then we're fully ORAN compliant. And 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 the reason I'm bringing that up now is because I know this is where we've been we've been having some discussions. So the way it's depicted right now, I'm very fine with it. But this is where I want to open up that for for Ravi, right, to better understand how he's viewing that interaction with the O-Cloud, if not going from an SMO through O2 and through basically some other means that he qualified, I think, uh, uh, the Nephew API. So, so Ravi, that's really what I would, I would so, like to... Yeah. Teen up Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah, job, no, no, so, so this is so this is okay. I think there were like a few points of um, kind of... Uh, um, alignment that was required, right? So I think in the previous picture, we started off with putting everything that's nephew under OCloud. So that's when I was trying to say that, hey, OCloud would actually go to the granularity of a cell site or to an edge or uh, regional and all that set. So the, you don't, don't you don't have actually a management and uh, a nephew management system sitting at that level. It is at the level of SMO. So at least we are aligned there right now. So, so we see the nephew orchestration is pretty much at the la level of the SMO. So, uh, and so, so in, in that sense, uh, you know, um, uh, you, you're looking at Nephew orchestration as that particular uh, function as, uh, uh, as as a global kind of a system, as a global controller of sorts, right? So the kind of APIs that it's going to expose to SMO would be far richer than what uh, an O2 does, right? In a normal sense. So basically, when you're saying that okay, SMO wants to control no cloud all those functionalities, the O2 IMS, O2 DMS functions would be scoped within that single O-Cloud instance, which is very much close to a, a realization of O-Cloud, right? Or physical resource, it's not at the global level. Uh, so, um, so in that sense, I, so that, that was one of the, one of the, one of the um, uh, views or basically the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the functions uh, that I wanted to say that nephew orchestration would be exposing to Focom. At the same time, uh, I, I didn't I didn't want to kind of I wanted to show a clear demarcation between the two architectures because somebody looking at from the ORAN end should not view this as saying that okay to implement an O2 O2 IMS O2 DMS you have to go to a nephew orchestration layer. That, that, the, that's why if you look into the my next figure, I say that if we just go to the next figure, figure Tim. Uh, yeah, I, I still put that, you know, there is, an, there, from the SMO, I, clear, I basically clear, I, I, I demarcate, you know, where ORAN uh, kind of uh, ends and where Nephew begins by saying that, okay, all these functions are within the purview of ORAN. It will evolve as it's supposed to. And uh, the SMO could still control the O-Clouds using the O2IMS, O2DMS function. That's a dotted line. But alternately, then the FOCOM and FOCOM can also use all the native declarative APIs that Nephew APIs offer. So, it, it, so this is, again, I was trying to say even, you know, even with uh, what um, uh, Tim was bringing on, right? Deploying from an from operational perspective, these systems might all be sitting at one place talking to each other. but 
the APIs and their and the, and 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 the different versions of APIs that uh, Focom and Foc can cons would consume would be entirely dictated by what a few APIs offer. I see it as very much similar to your O2 DMS, HC profiles, or KTS profile. We, we pretty much say there's there's a different body of, of people who are developing this and that you're consuming it. I would I, that's how I see in a few APIs eyes. Okay, that's so why I was I, trying to show that kind of demarcation and and you know uh, not necessarily it will not be at the level of it will be much richer than what normal O2 IMS or DMS does. Go ahead, Alexis. Yes. So so my quick reaction to this is really it looks like so slide six where we look. I'm sorry, Tim. I know you're jumping slides, but so where we see the Nefio APIs here. Uh, mm. I don't disagree with this. I mean, this is Nephew's goal, right? Yes. That Focom and F4 will probably interact with a Nephew management cluster or domain orchestrator. The name doesn't matter much, I believe. And that South Bond, they will talk to to the cloud. So I, I agree with that. But if we look at slide five, then it becomes more of an implementation detail of how Focom and NFO are realized. So it could very much be the NFO APIs, but, and I think this is pretty much depicted without calling it the NFO APIs, um, but it could be also whatever property means that you have. So you don't, you know, it depends the type of um, strategy we wanna have. Do we wanna say that <clears throat> we, we, we somewhat request that Focom and FO talks to the Nephew API within a Nephew architecture and it could be fine. Or we leave that to interpretation as part of that Ormo box. Now no uh, yeah no a reason why I'm saying is that it's because you know people looking at it from uh, from the Oran perspective should not see this as a dependency. So that's why you know it, it is purely purely from an architectural Kind of a cleanliness perspective that you know it's good to separate out the two things. I mean, it it is a, it is an it's a it's a may use thing. I mean, Focom and Fo can use it, may not use it. It can directly control the cloud. But and that it, that's why that's why I put it in here, right? So just to just to note it because you can, if you look at the diagram, there's if you notice the termination is on the Ormo, not on the Nepio orchestration. So there's got to be some something within the Ormo function that determines uh, for a particular OCloud instance that it's going to use the Nepio orchestration function to do the termination or not, right? And so that's what this, that's, I thought that that depicted it well. It, it fit that same uh, concept, but I got three hands up. So let's, Wim, uh, I guess Wim, you're first. I guess the hands come up. No, uh, Bala, as, Bala is first. Okay. Bala is first, I think. I, I was just looking at the lines. So. <laughs> no, no, Bala is first. Go ahead. Wow. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, one of the uh, things I'm I'm trying to slightly difficult time wrapping my head, head around is uh, obviously it's, it's, it's a bigger scope we are talking about. We are talking about Nephew playing a role uh, as SMO, Nephew playing a role as uh, cloud, all those things. At the same time, we also need to understand the, the fundamental principles of Nephew, uh, how it's being built, such as configuration as data, uh, everything is a CRD, things like that. So in this in this diagram, if we um, think this is gonna act in, in, in SMO, a component of SMO, let's say. So are we, are we, are we saying that Nephew is gonna implement those southbound REST APIs to the cloud? Because- It will be, uh, yeah. Because it, that is that is not how it wants to operate. I think that's I mean that's how you I mean that 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 is the picture that is there even that's why I was referring to that wiki nephew which basically says I mean the nephew would kind of open have native open APIs to any service orchestrator that wants to consume it right and I'm for me when I say those APIs are they they're just based on specific use cases you want like I would say. Uh, uh, it could be a the topology CR we have been talking about. It could be kind of related to inventory management or network function deployment or anything, right? So, uh, 
But, but the thing is, the SMO, it's, it's very clear. For example, any ORAN compliant component, they need to specify, they need to adhere to certain southbound uh, standards. For example, it has to talk in O2, IMS or O2 DMS, or if it wants yes, to. Yes, exactly. To it it is, so that is that is where, you know, uh, that's why I said in that six, the figure six, I clearly see that FOCOM has an option, and FO has the option to basically control the oak clouds directly. That's vanilla uh, kind of ORAN or it could use the kind of the more complex and the rich APIs that NIFU offers, because then you offload a lot of the automation to NIFU domain orchestrator and use those uh, APIs or CRs that it, it, it's going to expose. And this will be very specific to, this could be generic ones, like, I mean, that uh, we might uh, have uh, probably, uh, uh, or it could be kind of VRAN specific ones, uh, 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 and what we have been developing, right? Because we uh, uh, there's been discussion within within a few that okay, a lot of it has to be generalized, consumable. But I see some things like you know accelerator, timing synchronization, these kind of management functions could be, could be very specific to VRAN. So, but but let's be very careful, right? I just want to again, I think Lex has put it in the chat, right? Is that from the O2 IMS standard interface, right? Um, even in the current TR, what the what the what the TR exposed was said, hey, look, we can do uh, provisioning of clusters using Kubernetes, but then uh, but then for other services like inventory and uh, vault, maybe performance, those types of services to the SMO really are best used the RESTful interface. So the point is, I don't care what what gets put up what whether it's restful or kubernetes ultimately what gets decided but the fact of the matter is that the architecture has to and i think robbie is or robbie was saying the same thing has to account for both restful interfaces to the o-cloud as well as uh the kubernetes native interfaces themselves and and so that's what we're trying to depict here uh what i was trying to depict here the way that gets depicted it's simply that the ORMO terminates the interfaces. And so you can do RESTful, you can do K8S. The way Ravi had shown it here, and, and I, have a, I have a problem with this particular interface here uh, because it doesn't come off of that. We'd have to come off of this somehow. But yeah, uh, it was, it's, was trying to show, it's, it's trying to show the same this. thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's messy with this, this slide okay. uh, thing. Deck, All the right, Google. so let's, let's get some other opinions here. Uh, guys, so again, We've got about 15 minutes, so. Yeah, just throw. to comment on that, what you said, Tim. So, yeah. I mean, I, it'll be, the, so So what we what we are developing within the O2 IMS, the, the KHS profile, I mean, the difference would be that you are basically doing everything in the context of a single Oak cloud instance, but since the domain orchestrator sits at a global level, you could, you could do uh, kind of more, kind of more powerful intent, uh, intent based APIs to, create multiple clusters across multiple clouds and using all the package variant set, package variant, everything that that uh, that um, uh, that the platform, NIFU platform offers, right? So it'll be it, it'll be more expressive in that right. sense. So that will be the major difference. Yeah. yeah, so you have you have some more flexibility because you're doing the ad adaptation and translation. That's yeah, that's and also because you're sitting at the global level, at the same yes, SML right. level. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think was Wim next? So, Bala, if you guys can put your hands down when you're done, because I'm just going by the yeah, hand. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, so, uh, yeah. I, oh, Bala, I can put my hand down, but to have some more questions, but we can discuss it later, yeah. Yeah, let's get, let's get Wim and Joseph and Joey. And yeah. We got, we got a lot, so. So, I have, I have a bit of a different view on these pictures, by the way. Uh, I've been digging a little bit into it. I mean, if I, so here is, the, here is the, my view of the situation. Nephew is a domain orchestration. Right, for run, core, and I potentially transport or whatever else uh, that we depicted, right? SMO is a domain orchestration for run, focus on run, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Which, so what it means at the end of the day, in my view, is that I, in, if we have to comply to ORAN, we have to comply to the SMO, so to the component, right? But we will do implementations or uh, we or whomever, that would be an implementation using the Nefio principles. So in other words, 
there is no, let's say, mediation towards NEFIO. There is basically an IMS and a DMS that uses NEFIO. And there is no such thing as, uh, I saw that I basically there would be an implementation of these interfaces using NEFIO principles. And that's what NEF, uh, what we should be focused upon. And with the goal to prove that this is the most uh, flexible way of, of uh, going down this path. So, so um, in other words, yeah. what I'm trying to, to depict yeah. is that you take the components of, of ORAM and you make basically a nephew variation of them. No, so that is where we were also discussing. Um, so I just quickly respond to him. So that's where we were also kind of arguing and discussing in the sense that is, I mean, because, you know, the, the way it is defined is, you know, the O2 IMS, O2 DMS is working at no cloud level, right? And the O cloud mm -hmm. level could go at the granularity of, as I said, it could go to a cell site too, right? So, and sure. uh, and domain orchestrator is something sitting at, at the global level, at the SMO level. And the goal has always been to do automation at scale, right? So you want to manage multiple low clouds instances um, or multiple network function deployments across multiple hierarchy of low clouds, um, you know, with 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 simple kind of, or basically with some declarative intents. So to yeah. say that you want to use uh, Nephew to implement these interfaces would be kind of relegating it to kind of that uh, you know to the sitting at to one sitting at the at the far north and one sitting at far south it doesn't make uh, at least sense to me from what the domain orchestrator kind of tries to achieve so they, no, but they I, 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 yeah. I, so ravi i said it before right i mean we you are still depicting a management cluster and a single one right i'm depicting it uh, if we have to do something differently we can have multiple layers of uh, hierarchy in this uh, in this space so in other words there's nothing for me in my mind that uh, limits us to build, let's say, an intermediate layer that does uh, the orchestration across a subset of uh, the systems, nor have we constraints with the fact that there will be a cloud that manages a radio unit uh, remotely. I mean, that's perfectly possible. Yeah, that's where the domain orchestrator comes in. I mean, we are not, I mean, this just goes to yeah, so, the, so, I mean, the, the basic high level vision of uh, Nephew. I think that that's what it is. Yeah, what, but, but what, I, what I'm trying is. to. What I'm trying to, to get to is the following. If you try to take, an, let's say, an architecture from all realm, we have to make it NetVIO specific. And that's my comment, right? So in other words, you will have instantiation of each of these bubbles that are going to be NetVIO uh, specific. Because otherwise what okay. you'll end up doing, when... you'll end up, because for if you look to IMS and DMS, they are basically, I, either the same way as we do in Nephew or another way, but you're not going to deploy the other way on Nephew because then you are going to have a mismatch of multiple things together. And that's probably architecturally not a good thing to do and operationally not a good thing to do. So that's why I'm making the comment of the fact that, okay, if you do this within Nephew, you're going to follow the Nephew principles within each of these components. So I'll, yeah, so that's my, my view of this. Yeah, that, that's exactly where I was getting to, Wim. I mean, even if we do that, that means we may not be implementing certain interfaces that ORAN suggests. Correct. And we, we may, might be exposing them uh, northbound in the way that they want, right? But we maybe southbound do it uh, in specific ways, or we have an intermediate layer that, that does that, right? So that's, that's why... I'm... That's closer to this, though, Wim, right? Because, again, we got the functions yes. and these orchestrations... But I would not... Are so, 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 so I would not depict this orchestration layer necessarily. For me, these are all implementing based on Nephew, uh principles, by the way. So that's why for me... That, so you, so you're would, just saying we would, would still just show FOCOM and we would just show it with some... There's some... I would, I would, I would put a Nephew bracket or something inside and, and say that uh, these are the things. Now, I, just to be clear, uh -huh. most likely we will we should focus on IMS and DMS first, in my view, because going yeah. to the upper layer. But but I look at it the following way, guys. We are working on observability, right? And the observability will uh, will handle uh, fault management and performance management and tracing and stuff like that. So we are going to have an FCAPS uh, framework that's going to be an alternative to how it's done traditionally, right? 
And so as a result, you will see that that's why I'm, I made the statement from the beginning that we are a domain orchestration. In a domain orchestration, you have to actually support this full FCAPS uh, capabilities. And I, although we are doing it in a declarative way, we still have to, I, we will still implement uh, all of these capabilities uh, at some point, right? And and that's why I'm saying is that if you map this to Nephew, you need to make these components Nephew compliant. Okay. So all right. I'll so, stop there. Okay. So Joseph. So one. So one question, oh. Wim, and, and by the way, by way maybe. Or by way, my my one one more comment, right? We are basically saying, I REST interface Kubernetes is a REST interface, right? Well, so no, no. So, I, so so, you... but, but 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 Wim, I want to be clear, right? So again, yep. ORAN has defined yes. a RESTful set of services, actual services. Okay. That's not REST, right? It's a RESTful set of services predefined, right? With a set of resources and everything else. And so when Sure, they, but they, what I'm they, trying to say is that we will have, a, so you map it into KRM, but you could, so it's the same as with Yang, right? So you, you can map the API towards a, a KRM model. So you can map the service to it. And I, to your point in the beginning, like a producer and a consumer is nothing any much different than the consumer is a controller with the API and the producer is the guy that uh, that 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 that, cons that consume them and produce them so you have the same principles in that in in KRM by the way exactly the same yes but i want to be clear right is that the that 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 the IMS that's exposed and, and you have to go look at the study that that i think Alexis yeah. is leading in ORAN right there are there is a set of services that uh, fault, for example, right? So they've got these things called alarm dictionaries and all this stuff. They have these information models or PM. They've got concepts of PM jobs. That's what that's yeah. what an IMS producer, right, of the O2 IMS interface will expose, right? Yes, um, yes, yeah, yeah. And so, and so and just to be clear, that, yeah. yeah. Just to be clear, right? So I think maybe, and I think I just saw Alex's note. What I'm not saying is that FCAPs will have to be mapped to CRDs, right? I'm not saying that, but we are going to do an observability framework, right? Which have, which will do fault and performance monitoring, right? Which will expose an interface from that uh, that system. That's yeah. not going to be, I. That's not going to be purely KRM, right? So that's going to be a fault and performance management interface to be able to interact with multiple things. Uh, so we have to be clear that. So when I talk about KRM, I talk about the configuration side of things, but for fault and performance management, we will have uh, regular uh, consumers uh, that, that will consume that data. Yes. But they were producing what the interface is specified, is what you're saying. Yes, and most likely that's, that's I see, it should be flexible that you can plug into to any system uh, at the end of the day, right? So it's uh, that we are not tied to a specific uh, implementation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so let's get on, let's, on that note. Oh, go ahead. I, I just want to add one point on that particular note. Yes, like Tim said, there are RESTful interfaces. I'm getting myself innately familiar with those uh, as well. But at the same time, uh, they are more, mostly for at this point of time, they are defined for inventory uh, and monitoring. Uh, those two are at the stage three level. So uh, from the monitoring perspective, again, uh, I, 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 there is a lot of demand. There's a lot of ways that a work cloud should implement that particular interface. For example, it should allow filtering, it should allow subscriptions, it could allow, it could allow multiple subscriptions. I'm not sure whether in Nephew we're gonna do all this. So long story short, I think we are not saying, I'm, hopefully I'm, I'm thinking right here. I think we're not saying that we are going to implement either Nephew as either a work cloud or a SMO reference implementation. I, I hope we are not saying that. No, because we can never have a, a, a Nephew. There's no service context within Nephew orchestration. Yeah. But the key thing is the idea is that I, I'm still not getting the picture Vim is trying to say. so. How would you modify this picture according to your view of him? If you see, if you say that okay, there's no nephew orchestration sitting at decimal level, forget about the demarcation. Then mm -hmm. it's purely you're just saying that nephew sits at some functional components within the FOCOM and the IMS. It is simply you know you're just using nephew to kind of uh, as as something to implement it. Uh, 
uh, uh, for me that picture is not clear but what will be the modification in this picture primarily so for so FOCOM and NFO are basically a set of uh, controllers and uh, maybe event handlers on top of an observability framework that deliver the uh, FCO, uh, uh, FOCOM and NFO implementation. Yeah, so, so base, but then base, basically what, what... you would suck these things, Ben, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when was what you're saying, you just suck those that not that yeah they are yeah so they will consume that but the implementation of those components will use that framework is what i'm trying to say and so yeah. what will the framework offer that's a question right so if you're saying that it's a domain orchestrator what would be the function of the domain orchestrator so a domain orchestration has i so at the end of the day I, so today we have been mainly focused on configuration right so we use krm as a as a vehicle to do so right so that means that you have a KRM based interface for that. If you look to FCAPS, I saw then fault performance and tracing, the architecture we are going for is we have a data lake, right? Which basically consumes metric logging, tracing, and performance monitoring data that can be consumed by various systems, right? Including the controller that does configuration in order to act and do service assurance or fault or performance monitoring systems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you you talked about service assurance, you talk about observability. We also do cluster management and hopefully we are all yeah. with NF2 to infra, what you're doing is also a kind of doing some kind of homing. You're doing everything that the orchestration does. So I, what I'm saying That's is that, saying. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but then it's doing just more than O2. You can't just put the network orchestration into NFO and NFO come and say, hey, NFO is an FU orchestration in the context of ORAN is simply about O2. No, that's not a thing because we just scored with uh, O2. We, we also want O1 to probably be in the picture at some point. So what I'm saying oh, is Oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. Hang on. Yes. Uh, yes. I'll stop you there real quick, Ravi. So FOCOM has responsibilities. The FOCOM services have responsibilities for the IM or for the infrastructure of the cloud. O1 is an application layer element. We may very well have to have some Nephio enablement in, uh, uh, in the RAND NFOAM or in the service orchestration. I think we, we save that different, right? But to say that I'm going to have um, uh, uh, O1 coming into some function that's a Nephio orchestration function that's going to be associated with FOCOM or NFO, that that just that no, 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 way no, out, saying, outside yeah. the standard. Yeah, right? yeah, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that, see, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that you have, I mean, the scope right now is O2, but once you get O1 into the picture, then OM needs to be kind of integrated into this. Into this but it gets integrated kind of... up at service orchestration. Yes, that's, yes. That's and I'm also not clear how O1 get fits right now, because when you say it's service agnostic, I don't know what that means. But O2, okay, makes sense. But I, what I'm trying to say with, to, uh, trying to, uh, uh, trying to, uh, you know, respond to him is that it's it's lot more than just O2. As you said, we, we, we yeah, deal with and, and, <laughs> the yeah. entire life cycle manager of a cluster. We do probably life cycle management of inventory. We do life cycle okay, so management let's, of let's a network this, function guys. itself. So, right. I mean, but, but Ravi, this, Ravi, picture, this picture for me, it looks very logical. Yes, but whether you do more or less, I think we are discussing all around here, right? So whether we yes. do more or less at the end of the day, for me, it doesn't really matter at this stage, right? What we are discussing is how does Oran fit into Nephew, right? Or how does Nephew fit, fit into, into Oran? Oran? That's what yes, we are. Way, so. that's, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. what, that's, that's what okay, we are so, discussing. So whether we do more or less doesn't matter, right? I, uh, less is, uh, is worse. I, but So what we <laughs> should do is say, how do we map these components into an FEO uh, environment, right? That's what we are discussing. As so, far as so I Wim, understand. Wim, hang on. Yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you to do something because again, we've only got about five more minutes here, right, on this particular topic. Um, yeah. Could you do me a favor, Wim? Could you uh, come up onto this thing, make a copy of whatever slide they have, and put what you think it should look like? I think you're just saying you're going to move the controllers up there, but I'm going to let you do that. Oh, could you, yeah, could you do I, that for me? Yeah. yeah, I can do that. Yeah, no problem. All right, I appreciate it. Because that way we can get, uh, I, I got three more that's in line that's been waiting patiently and, and Alexis has a question yes, on something. So, Joseph? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just listening to all the conversations. Uh, so, I think most of the answers are uh, I got. But I, I think what I'm trying to say here is that uh, architecture of ORAN is fine. I think FOCOM, NFO, is fine, but I think you're trying to fit the implementation into the 
lo- the logical architecture i think that's the problem i think the confusion that comes in but i think the idea that everybody is trying to say looks similar uh, so i feel like what we were saying we might need to show focom the, there are certain set of services provided by focom nfo so some so at least some of those services will be provided by nfo at least to start with this what i understand so we might need to show that not as a separate box like it's shown here probably we need to like show uh, some parts of the focom is implemented by nfo some part of nfo is implemented by nfo orchestration so that's what i maybe uh, you might need to change the picture so that uh, everybody is on the same page and i think yeah. going forward i think we'll have to see what nfo can provide to the smo and slowly it can not implement all the functionalities but some parts of it let's say for nfo am oam in the future some parts of it might be uh, realized using nfo so slowly exactly. i think yeah, yeah, yeah. we need no, to show I, I that i agree with that yeah no that's a view exactly i had like you no know, they should evolve at its own pace you know o2 im ims o2 dms should evolve within oran nfo apis whether we start with o2 and then extend it to something should should be within yeah, our control so what use case so that's the reason i was trying to put that demarcation there to say that this yeah, api would the, be by nfo forum but not by uh, correct but if you see in the six slide right i mean it looks like it's completely uh, like an outside box it says and uh, it might give the wrong idea that's what i am no but it is coming from nfo team that's the reason right it's a different correct, forum correct. by itself that's, that's the reason i kind of true. separate it out yeah yeah but i think we should have the stick fifth slide and kind of move in or highlight that this functionality of oran some services we might need to go into the services of what focom provides and highlight these are the uh, requirements that is satisfied by nfo let's say 10 require, requirements of focom are there uh, five of them is done by nfo There's something like that you need to go to that level and uh, well, I, I yeah I don't know how to show that on an architecture document. I can show yeah, that it's in not, text. Yeah, not. I think we should just uh, okay. highlight for now some parts are implemented for by. And, and that should be that's that's, that's why I've been putting these things here, right? So those should mind. be the use cases too. I think we yeah we'll yeah that. it'll get down into use cases. So again, we're just yeah, trying to get. Yeah, but the up. architecture if you show a separate block, it looks like Focom is a separate implementation. Yeah, I think that to, that gets into what we're saying. I I get you. Yeah, right, right, correct. Okay. okay. All right. So yeah. Joey, thanks. You're next. Yeah, uh, I I won't labor too much because I have very very similar comments. Um, if the slide six really confuses me from an Oran architecture point of view, uh, but the points have been made like that O two IMS GMS kind of dotted line on the side. doesn't really fit and then the separate having like this separate nephew domain orchestrator um is concerning also because if you think about the oran architecture the it, the focom to ims thing is the o2 ims there shouldn't be something in between but if you go back to slide 5 and i think part of the problem is you know as has been mentioned the focom and nfo are just set up the logical services provided by the smo so Right. You can't really have a Focom and an NFO box, and then some sort of separate Nephew orchestration box, because it seems architecturally then you are implementing all of these things and they're different and separate. Where realistically, what you might need to do is have a picture with the Oran architecture that has the Focom and NFO, and then maybe a follow-up picture or a, something that goes on top of that to show, and this is how. Break up Focom. Break up Focom is what you're saying at a lower layer. Yeah. No, no, yeah. not the st- not break up Focom, but you, I wouldn't even have say Focom and NFO, and then the nephew realization in the same picture because then you're talk. It seems like they're separate things. Whereas, from what I understand, you want realistically to the nephew is going to realize the Focom and NFO functionality, not ha- be an an addition like a different thing on top. Yeah. Right. So, so like when I talk about the Focom, you know, the Focom talks southbound to the IMS, it's still true if you have if it's a nephew orchestration or it's this infrastructure cluster controller because that's the that is the realization of the Focom. So the the Focom and NFO are just logical the logical services that it's providing. They're not separate components as this kind of picture shows. The nephew orchestration 
is the Volcom and NFO when you it's really yeah, the realization yeah, yeah. of those things I, I, so yeah I, I, and, and I, but i think that's kind of been said and that's kind of what uh, has been done so uh i won't labor too much and if if uh, in terms let's, of maybe putting what, what, together what, a picture i would uh, you know i can i can try as well to maybe uh capture my thoughts on a picture and, and, and well, share well that. do do this for me because wim's doing this right piece of it i okay. added slide seven uh already yeah already. i saw it so if you could work joey if you could work with wim on what mm -hmm. you think because i think that's you guys are going along that same track, right? Okay. So uh, if you could do that, I, I, I see Wim's probably, he's going along the same way. I, whether it's Ormo or we don't need Ormo at that point. If we're getting rid of the, uh, if, we're, if we're removing that, the orchestration function. So, okay. So uh, I see. Uh, so one, one question please? to Joey would be like, if you were to go into that view that Seven has and, if you were to expose, if you were to talk to somebody like, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, if it's if it's an implementation, then what is nephew's relevance there? I mean, it's it's hidden. If those APIs are hidden, no, I wouldn't say uh, <laughs> the, with this picture. I wouldn't say if nephew is hidden. I would make nephew the prominent big piece in the picture. It's the nephew APIs that you are want to show here, and the Focom and the NFO. Is realized by nephew, not yeah exactly. So for yeah. some, and so it's almost the opposite way around to this picture, um, and it's the nephew APIs that you want to show, and they are realizing the functionality provided by Focom and NFO. They're not separate yeah. entities. So that's a, that's a, this whole point I was trying to make. So the what are the APIs that Focom and NFO uh, kind of would realize through nephew would be would be nothing to be kind of facing the the SMOS, the service bus, it would be only purely towards pointing south towards the managing the the, the, the hierarchy of four clouds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So because otherwise then you will be kind of contaminating the ORAN thing. You will, now you'll go and say that, hey, we have this entire set of APIs that Focom is is exposing and, and then you would have to think about how the other much. So that's why I was trying to clarify that, right? It's Flowcom and NFO, who implements it would kind of would want to kind of offload this automation into the Nephew layer, and and through the APIs that Nephew defines. And and as I said, this again goes to the the the, the higher level architecture that we have in the Wiki dot Nephew, where you clearly show the demarcation between the service orchestrator and the Nephew layer. So because otherwise people wouldn't kind of it wouldn't if it's an implementation, then you don't even have to show it. If All it's right. an API, then you have to show where the demarcation is. So Joey, Wim, uh, Ravi, if you guys could, we're starting with seven. Here we're we're, we're starting to try to look at the um, the the nephew enablement of the of the functions themselves and how to depict that. So if we can work on this in seven, Joey, Wim, Ravi, and come to a consensus with that, I, I don't I don't have an issue with that as well, right? But I think we need to we need to do that. So it's it's two minutes before the last the last comment on this one will be Vish, and then we have to go to a different agenda item. Okay, so I'll try to keep it short. It's not a comment probably on this. It's a generic question I had when we were talking about O Cloud, and when I read up the definition of O Cloud in the ORAN papers, it talks about it being compute storage networking BMC and BIOS and all the stuff. <clears throat> Does O2IMS talk about any configuring of any of this? Like I'm interested in BMC and BIOS. It, it, uh, it does, but it does it through a cluster template, right? And so they're just now coming with an oh, O-RAN. I'm sorry. It must be somebody I, I, look, yes. <laughs> I don't know. So, so my point was that, <laughs> Hey, Alok, I'm going to put you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you, buddy. Yeah, I, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I don't know if I could. Oh, he muted himself. Good. All right. So my point was is that yes, but it's it's a it's something that's still in in hot discussion with an ORAN, uh -huh. uh, and it, and and there's this concept of templates and infrastructure uh, elements, um, and so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into it much, but you can if you look at it and you got the ORAN site, uh, you can look at this concept of cluster templates or maybe talk to Alexis about it, but I I think it. Um, uh, it, it, it'll clarify some of that stuff for you, Vish. 
Okay. There's a Thank notion so of I ICS to initial configuration something. The reason there's, there's all that question. stuff fits into it. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but the cluster template is the savior. <laughs> yeah. The reason for the question is, you know, when we talk about uh, telco workloads, it's all bare metals is what I think in my head, and uh, all this needs to be set up. And if at any point of time, I mean, the question for the nephew folks, would we be getting in there? We we know we are saying we're going to be doing infrastructure configuration in nephew as well, one of the pillars. So is that coming at some point of time in the future is my question that I'm asking out loud. Maybe that, there's no answer right away. Yeah, yes, Vish, in Nephew, yes, we will have to deal with it. I probably will we'll reuse the existing, my hope is we will reuse the existing uh, projects slash operators that can do that job for us. But I think definitely, I think that will be part of, if we get into the RAND domain, that's something that, that we need to deal with. Cool. But I, I, regarding the ORAN stuff, they're not finalized. The finalized stuff is uh, very few APIs at this moment of time. They're mostly around uh, in, inventory gets and uh, alarm yeah, gets. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna crawl walk run guys. So we're right now we're taking uh, and crawling right. So as as ORAN becomes more mature, we'll become more mature in our integration of it. Right. So thank you. Yeah. All right, so so guys, I'm going to have to cut this off again. I think what we've said is is that uh, we're we're trying to come up with a a way of exposing the fact that um, these functions defined by or services defined by um, uh, the SMO. I, I think that's the real question at this point. Uh, how do we how do we show how do we depict that best to show that these are actually NFIs? Uh, you know, functionalities uh, that, that contain the services North Pound, right? So, so Tim, I, 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 I'm I sorry. I just want Rohit to speak a bit because I want to hear the perspective of a service provider on this one. Okay, so I got Hi, three, Rohit three, three, three minutes, Rohit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so one question I have with respect to the low-level configuration, I think in the ORN Alliance, uh, uh, only very little uh, definition is provided with respect to the initial configuration, like BMC setting, BIOS configuration. Only one particular topic is there, that is the ICS, the initial configuration set. And apart from that, I think nothing has been defined in the ORN Alliance for the initial configuration perspective. That's what I we, I would like to understand from the DT perspective, how, how we are going to handle this in the uh, nephew, how we are going to handle this by, uh, BMC settings, firmware upgrade, because the, whatever concepts we are discussing uh, these days, for me, it is more for the Kubernetes cluster perspective. That is my first question. And second question is why this uh, DMS component is part of both the management and workload clusters? So there's two questions there. So the first question I can only just say, again, with an ORAN, they're discussing the the, the so actual... the first one, I, I can oh, I can yeah. answer the first question, Tim. So we are working on a on a concept with NF2 Infra uh, that is going to uh, define a set of KRM, not only for uh, resources in Kubernetes, but also resources to the host, being kernel, BIOS, SRIOV, hardware stuff that you need to configure on the servers. Right. So that is a work item ongoing. Uh, I, so it's fairly early days, by the way. So if you're interested, I would welcome your input. But so we are uh, in the process of defining some KRM resources uh, for that, and we would create a, a first implementation on dealing with that, or use if it's available. Something. So is it in the so, is it in the nephew community NF to infra this project? Yeah, it's in a different. Yeah, so, uh, we'll try. yeah, it's a different different group that we are discussing. So I'm leading it, so that's why I'm uh, bringing it up. Yeah. Uh, so there is so there is a, a work. So there is an, a separate group or task force that is dealing with that aspect. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think the DMS is only trying to show that it is it is something that controls the workload cluster. Um, yeah. So the DMS is only dealing with deployment. So this is how I'm going to get the the ORAN NFs down on and monitor the ORAN and up the workloads themselves onto the uh, onto the cluster, right? Yeah. Okay, so oh, that was the use cases. Uh, all right, so let's go back to the um, the agenda real quick, guys, because I, I need to get a couple things from you um, to, to move this thing along. Um, so again, I, 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 I'm trying to get a date so we, again, what we've said is we will have a high-level architecture. 
the objectives that we're going to do for release three and the identification and descriptions of the user stories identified. And we're going to go back to the network architecture team to, to let them know what we're doing and, and get agreement, right? I, and, 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 and communicate this to them, right? And so the deadline that, that I tentatively picked because of the deadline that uh, was given to us from the network automation team was December 1st. Now that deadline itself, if you look at the, the number of days uh, or the number of weeks, I think uh, we only have three other times that we can discuss this, right? So my question is, is that what do we want to do with the, with the date? Do we still think December 1st is a realistic date? If it is, uh, we've got to, we actually have to come to conclusion, I believe this week, on the high level architectures so we can decide on the objectives and the identifications of the stories. So um, someone has to give me some guidance of what I tell the network architecture team. Do we think that December 1st is still a valid date? Uh, I do think so, yeah. I mean, it's probably going to take the next meeting to converge, but I think we're getting there. And then identifying objective and user story, we're going to have probably three meetings to do that. So in my opinion, I think it's uh, it's achievable. Does anyone... Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the only other thing I would suggest, because right now that, that deck we only have is a set of diagrams. So we also need some text to explain it. So... Well, we'll get there. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll get we'll get there. That's why I've been putting those diagrams down to put some text mm -hmm. behind it. We're right? saying that one month is good enough from now to there to get some write up on it. I think uh, we should we should have some time for that as well to take feedback and to iterate over that and stuff. So we're going to give this to. So the way that I looked at this, Robbie, is that this goes to the network architecture team, right? And you can look at. I actually created some uh, uh, seated some objectives and uh, uh, some identifications, right? And I was using what we had currently up to today. So I try to seed some of these stories. And the nice thing about the stories are we can rely on some of the ORAN stories that they've already done, the user stories that they've done the use cases for them, right? So, so if we don't think it's December 1st, then Ravi, then what's the date? No, no. My question is that my, my only comment was that, you know, we should all allocate. So probably another week we can come in alignment with the architecture, but then probably another week for uh, putting some documentation, explaining people exactly what this integration of the two architectures mean and what it's trying sure. to achieve. But we can do uh, so that just while probably... we're doing the objectives. We can do that while. Yes, we're... exactly. I just said, okay, there's okay. that item too. That's all. Yeah. Okay, got it. I think right. December 1st is doable. All right. And so the other one is that uh, what what has been requested us from the network automation team is to have uh, the, these artifacts, if you will, because this is again what we provided to uh, for release two. But these types of artifacts to the network architecture team or network our automation team uh, for January thirty first. So this means that you know December is kind of dead, guys. Let's be honest, right? You maybe get the first two weeks. But then, uh, then you get the four weeks. So basically, you have at most six weeks uh, to put together the deployment architectures, give them the blueprints, and you can see examples of what they did for release to uh, operators. And then uh, they wanted to add on some APIs that, that they were doing based upon the use cases. Um, so the question is, is that, is that good enough? Is that okay with you guys to make that commitment? Gives you about six weeks. I'm, I'm a bit confused that our role is to define these things. I think this is more of a joint responsibility between SIG architecture and, and automation. I mean, yeah, to, to, to answer your them... question, I think yeah. we can achieve that date, but I'm, I'm debating the content of what we need to achieve here. Oh, well, yeah, the content is, is quite open. All I did was went through what, what was documented for release to, right? And so if there's, if there's something that's changed, again, you could go to, um, this is what they discussed in release two. Sorry, I was just using artifacts from previous releases, right? So this is what it looked like for release two. They started talking about these deployment blueprints, uh, the operators themselves. And so that's where I was, that's where I took it, right? So you had the, the architecture mapping, the deployment blueprints and the operators. 
So those were the those were the artifacts that I knew of. If there are other ones, I'm open to it. Uh, but the question is, uh, you know, do we think the it, January 31st is a, a a date that we can provide that to? Yeah, I, th I think so. In my view, yes. Uh, probably when you say objectives, so we'll we'll produce the architecture just to summarize and for my own understanding. And the objective is okay. What are we going to achieve for this R three time frame? Yeah, and I and I see that I see that objectives, Bala. Right. So, if you look at it, what we'll do here, and there's there's this piece for it that I see that, and all we're doing is you're saying what we're going to do in release three, right? So there's objectives that come up. What do you want to see, right? Yeah. And then from there, you have um, I I just saying programmatic bit wise, we probably need to break this into tracks, right, for people with the specialties. And then I seeded some use cases, right? So from what we want to see, what's a proof of concept, what's not, down to what is that they're going to see when they see a proof of concept, for example, right? And I just added those in based upon some use cases that were there. All that stuff needs to be discussed. So that's what yeah. I mean when I say objectives and use cases. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Also, on the comment, uh, Tim, the, the I think in the in the slides that you showed from from the tech summit, I don't think O2 was in the scope then. It was everything around uh, the network function orchestration. So I think this would be an entirely new piece of work, and that's what I think yeah. we wanted to understand. Well, for release two, it is. Yeah, yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So for release three, it is around the O2, right? That's a good point. <laughs> exactly, and then we we'll have to come up. This would be entirely new. Right? I don't think this has been discussed earlier, and that's why we wanted Seishu's input on what OSC, OSC does or what that's right. OAI has in support for. O2 and I and I do have a request after this, guys. So okay, so it's eleven two. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the guys that they that this is okay, right? Um, for for now, um, we'll, we're gonna shoot for this. If there are artifacts um, that you guys think that you need to have or whim, uh, whim's not on. But if from the network automation team, if there's artifacts that you think that is needed, just uh, you know, add it to the list here, and we'll we'll figure out how to how to do them right for the transfer. And again, it has to be done in conjunction. But when we did release two, it was in conjunction. All right, and so uh, I'm going to leave that go because there's a SIG automation meeting. So I'm going to say that we're down to here, um, that we got down to here. And is there anything else before we close? Okay, I don't hear anything. And just to let you know, I am in conversation with Seishu and Alexa to try to provide some of this uh, information that you need for the OAI and the OSC stuff. So, okay. All right. So uh, I'll see you guys next week then. Talk to you later. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Tim. Tim. Great meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm.